I wait each night for a self. I say the mist. I say the strange tumble of leaves. I say a motor in the distance. But I mean a self and a self and a self. A small cold wind coils and uncoils in the corner of every room, a vagrant. In the dream, I gather my life in bundles and stand at the edge of a field of snow. It is a field I know but have never seen. It is nowhere and always new. What about the lives I might have lived? As who? And who will be accountable for this regret I see no way to avoid? A core or a husk, I need to learn not how to speak, but from where. Do you understand? I say name, but I mean a conduit from me to me. I mean a net. I mean an awning of stars. Massa Confusa. A body was left me. I did not put it on. Two densities of bone, two methods of eye. In the spleen, an oasis, an oasis as mirage. All my people burned on either side of me. This is called Trying to Speak. Um, and I was, I was recently told that I should offer, because the book is not light. <laughs> and I was recently told that I should offer trigger warnings at reading. So um, the next two poems that I'm going to read um, deal uh, in some way with domestic abuse and uh, traumatic racial history. Um, the latter more so in the second poem that I'll read. But anyway, so it's called Trying to Speak. Another time on their bed, he called out, holding a 38 against her neck, slurring something about freedom. And she, repeating the Arabic name she'd given him, Salim, the kind, the undamaged, paled like flame, an empty cocoon separating, dispersing. From the hallway, I watched him step down and walk out of the room, running his hand through my hair as he crossed the threshold. Composed, turning to glance at the clock, she closed her robe and asked me to take the chicken from the freezer. This is called uh, Plantation. When he finally brought the hammer down, one half inch from my mother's face, the hole in the wall wide as a silver dollar, I was close enough, huddled there in the folds of her lap, her arms wet with sweat and crossed against my back. And since from the room all sound had gone, I was clear enough to see inside the cracked plaster, a river delta fractured, branching off and becoming the sea, or a tiny moon on a shore of white sand, the tide lapping it in foam and tugging. No, 12 dead presidents perched there, each with the face of my father, tight-lipped, vacant-eyed, scanning the field for a body to mark, then locking in on her knee-bent dread ordinary, mammary, a yellow suckling heavy on her tit. No, I think it was her one good eye, refusing to blink, scaling the bare white wall at the core of the mind, not measuring its height, then circling a waterless well in a desert without sand, unnumbered sisters before her, caught in the belly of the boats, where there was too much sound to hear, though only one voice, one cry, their dark arms like trellised vines crossed and reaching. Uh, so I'm going to read uh, the poem that was in the coffee bag, which was um, such a nice 
uh, project to be uh, involved in. So thank you again, Stu, for including me in that, and to the folks at Nomadic um, for doing such an exciting project. You know, um, we're in lit journals. You know, and that's where people find our poems. Um, so it's good to to bring poems to folks who might not know to seek them out. Um, so thanks for that. Uh, okay, this is called um, Self Portrait in Black and White. If I said I did not want to live anymore, would you understand that I meant like this? The years form a mythology I can almost explain. I see in colors because they are always so much a part of the problem. A fire engine is a backpack and my father. Dollar bill is headscarf, star and crescent. Candy cane is barbershop and my choice of men. Gray is skin, the bridge in the center of your eye. Now, stirring milk into my coffee with a bent spoon, I stir milk into my coffee with a bent spoon. So I'm going to read a poem um, that I actually, so there's some Kaveh Kahnem family in the room. And um, Kaveh Kahnem is an amazing organization that's really um, changed my life um, in all ways. And I'm going to read a poem that I wrote actually about uh, my journey um, to Kaveh, like my literal journey to Kaveh Kahnem, um, to the first retreat. I think it was the summer of 2013. Um, which was, you know, personally uh, a huge uh, transition for me and a confrontation of something, uh, you know, an, um, a kind of core essential aspect of myself that um, for a whole host of reasons had prior to that moment been um, unexplored. So this poem is actually um, dedicated to all the attendees of the 2013 Kaveh Kahnem Retreat, and it's called Passing, which I was no longer willing to do. At a station in a no-name town, the blue-red coleus blooms from a cleft in the track. Too obvious, I say, out loud, to the window, to God, to no one, rolling my white eyes into my thick, bright head. If I arrive, who will greet me as brother? Who will greet me at all, feeling from my veins the pull of our one long pulse. Pissing into the metal bin, my waist streaming out onto the track, I laugh at the mirror, an animal, unhinging, trying to see what they see in whatever I am standing here. Then the train slides into a long tunnel. The lights flicker off, and I am back inside my mother. Okay, uh, so I told you I had nothing light for you. Uh, I mean, I'm honest about it anyway. So uh, I will do, I think like two or three more, I think. Um, okay, I'm gonna do a prose poem um, called Clean Slate. Um, and part of the, you know, I mentioned earlier the, the instability of race. I think part of, part of the way that that's been expressed and um, part of the kind of historical explanation for that um, expressed within my family and the historical explanation for that is the intersection of blackness and Arabness and how within the Arab world um, there's really a disavowal of blackness and of Africanness. And, um, I'll probably be speaking longer than the poem. The poem's quite short, but it's necessary um, contextualization. In uh, North Africa, um, for folks who may, you know, who may not know, um, I identity is incredibly complex because there are actually two um, colonial histories in the North. When we think about colonial, a colonial history in North Africa, we think about French occupation typically, but um, the Arab presence in North Africa is itself a colonial history. And what we, what we actually have in North Africa are Arabized Africans who then centuries later were colonized by the French. And so the, um, 
the psychic trauma really um, and the complexity around identity in the North is uh, what results in even phenotypically very dark North Africans um, identifying with Europe, you know, not identifying with Sub-Saharan Africa, not identifying with blackness. Um, and so it's um, especially coming from the US, you know, it's, um, it's surreal. Um, so anyway, so this is, um, this is a prose poem called Clean Slate. As a very young woman, my mother drank a glass of bleach, thinking it water, not tasting the burn, not smelling a single fume. At the hospital, after she had begun to breathe, the color returned to her face. The doctor warned, one chemical will never exit your system. It won't ever leave you. Though she has survived, she does not know it. Yesterday on the phone, I said, I'm beginning to understand that I am African. And she said, now how can that be, child? How can that be? And I'll just read one more from that vein since I talk so much about um, the historical context. This is called, uh, the most opaque sands make for the clearest glass. The dark matter turned its face to mine and I could feel its breathing, the invisible pull between the invisible air and my half-lit face, hungry and waiting. I felt it reaching for me, the sorrow down slip of its call its smoke tongue licking behind my ears, my hair erect with kinesis. I felt it settle on and around the table, a slow turning, a cold tail. How can she sit there and say, child, I am not, we are not, in spite of, no, inside of, the dark fact of her body? And I'm going to close um, with something from the other um, thread of the book, which explores queer identity and queer sexuality. And this is a sequence um, called Homosexuality. And it's organized um, geographically. So each, each section has its own uh, geography. And so I'll just name um, the place where we are. Um, and uh, thank you uh, so much again for being here and for inviting me to, to read these poems too. Homosexuality. New York. These days, my sympathy narrows. In the Barracuda, I sip a dirty martini, my back against the bar. In the half-lit glitz, marionettes bloom from the ceiling, the walls, stringless, they fumble into each other always about to fall. Casablanca. My uncles find wives at the Sook. Kautar and Latifa were sisters, now sisters-in-law. At home, preparing couscous, they slip gin into their buttermilk, their men at the window calling down to boys on bicycles. Laramie. Florence, and are you here too, dear Brunetto? If I had not in those days found you among the other poets in the ghetto, would I now be here passing through this place, guided by the elder to the skies above the sky? How could I alone issue these words, this music in our sighs? Give me your book, your exiled hands, I will hold them as your unreadable eyes and walk with reverence on burning sands. California. This initiative measure is submitted to the people in accordance with the provisions of Article 2, Section 8 of the state constitution. This initiative measure expressly amends the state constitution by adding a section thereto. 
Newark, New Jersey, Cypress, Texas, Greensburg, Indiana, Tehachapi, California. Facebook asks, what's on your mind? Jumping off the GW bridge, sorry. No note, no note, no note. Zurich, as though recklessly we burn the old parchments in unison, cleansing the walls with their smoke, as though our bodies themselves have magnetized. Like at night, when I enter the room to join you in bed, and you, still asleep, reach out for me. Thank you so much.